Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Today I'm going to show you how I configured SD1 in the FortiGate ADD, which is my firewall in this home network. And I'm going to show you how I can now use two service providers. All right, so first of all, I'm going to show you my current design. For those of you that have been on this channel for a while, you've seen this before. So this is my FortiGate and this is the whole design. I've been sharing with you this project where I install all these, uh, these devices in my home network. The next step would be the APs. I've already installed them. I just need to create a video. And now the change that I made here is that First, I have this one gigabit per second connection that I showed you in one of my last videos. This is my main connection from Centrelink and it was good. I mean, it's, it's running just fine until it's not running, even for a few seconds. But I dropped some connection one day. I was in a, I was in a, in a meeting. I've been working from home for a while now since I think March 2020, since this um, illness started. So when you work from home, you really rely on your internet connection. You need to have perfect internet connection to be able to work well. In my work, I spend a lot of time meeting with my coworkers, my manager, or um, our vendors. So I need to have good internet connection for those meetings to be well. And I remember one instance when I was in a meeting, I was actually presenting in a meeting, and all of a sudden I couldn't receive any feedback or anything and then I checked my connection I was down I had like 30 second drop in my internet connection and 30 seconds is not a long time but when you are in very important meeting it can really seem like an eternity so that's why I decided to have a second connection or a backup connection so my first connection is here with one gigabit per second and my second connection is there with 20 megabit per second so this is fiber connection and this is cable connection this is my old cable that I had I still have my, my modem, so I just reused that modem to connect to cable. So it's back online now, connected to the cable modem from Comcast, and now I'm able to have the cable connection connected to the port four of the 40 gate, and the fiber connection connected to the port one of the 40 gate, and SD1 is helping me balance the traffic or use both of these links. SD1 is the new concept of WAN that you may have heard about. It's a new way of building virtual WAN architecture. It's really smart. SD stands for software defined. So you leverage the power of software to be able to create um, uh, connections between two sites and you can manage those connections through um, um, an SDN controller that you have in a different device. And this goes beyond those traditional one technologies that we know like MPLS and it's, it's really good when I was working at they have a they have a whole uh, department a whole team of SD1 that serve customers with SD1 devices and those SD1 devices are able to connect between them and they're able to be controlled by the controller and in my case for example the SD1 inside the Ford gate will be able to see those two connections that I have and will assess the state of those connections and decide which one to use at any given time. And now let me show you what it looks like inside the Ford gate right now. So this is the Ford gate ADD. I can go under network and SD1. This is my SD1 interface, as you can see here. And I have two members. The first one is the WAN connection, which is the primary connection here, the fiber one. And the second one is one two, which is the secondary connection. And down here, you can see the usage of SD1. In terms of bandwidth, 97% uh, is WAN1 or the primary and 3% is the secondary. In terms of volume, I pretty much send and receive most of my traffic through the primary connection. You can see here that the secondary just has 1.2 gig and it's not really used much. So there is a, I have some configurations here that prefer the the fiber connection so if i have fiber i'll be connected to the fiber and if i if i lose the fiber connection i will automatically switch to the cable connection and that's why i'm using this and for the sessions all the sessions currently are on the primary connection here we have the performance sls these are um, configurations that you set to be able to test those different links and see what you have in terms of packet loss latency or jitter based on these measures or parameters you are able to set your rules for your sd1 to say for example that if you have 0.01 percent packet loss on the link number two disable that link those are the kind of rules that you can create for your firewall to be able to pick which connection to choose and here we can see 
the rules that we have for our SD1 interface. And I'm going to show you how I can create all of this. And we also have a static route that is sending everything through the SD1 interface. And inside the SD1, we have some um, intelligence that will see exactly the traffic. And you can even, you can do a lot with SD1. You can actually tell it what kind of traffic to send where. So it will be able to see your traffic. And let's say if you have different applications as a business, or if you have um, many ways of using your internet, SD1 can help you sort through the traffic and use it in a very efficient way. Like for example, if I had to pick different types of traffic from my home network, I can say for example, okay, if I have voice traffic, send it through the, 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 the optical or the fiber connection and any other traffic, send it to the cable connection because I know that voice is kind of um, connection sensitive. You can set up how you want your SD1 um, interfaces or members to behave. All right, so now I'm going to remove the configurations that I have on this device, and then I'm going to show you how I set this back. If you like what I do, if you are a professional or a future professional, don't forget to, or if you are just an enthusiast that likes to play with uh, technology, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I create a lot of these kind of videos and also like this video to promote it on YouTube. So now I'm going to delete all the configurations that I have for SD1 here and I'm going to restart everything from scratch. So I need to uh, go ahead and disable the SD1 interface and then delete it. From here, I can't do much. So first of all, if you want to delete something, you need to make sure that it's not used anywhere. So let's go under our IPv4 policy and make sure that we delete all the policies that have um, SD1. I think this one, yeah, this one is going from main to SD1. So this one can be deleted uh, and this will bring my internet down. Right now I have internet, you can see the pings. So I am going to remove that and my connection is going to drop as you can see, let's see. All right, so now I have no connection anymore. I'm going to delete this one as well for my other devices in the network. Uh, this also goes down. So I think now I'm able to delete, no, I need also to delete the IPv4, I mean the the static route. Uh, no, yep, static route, I can delete it here because it has SD1 in it, so I don't want to have that. SD1 rule, this first rule here can be deleted. Uh, the performance SLA, I can delete them as well. The first one, gone. The second one, gone. Oh, by the way, before doing this, I did a backup of my configuration already, so I'm fine. But I'm going to rebuild everything in front of you here. If you don't see SD1 under um, network, you need to go uh, in your system and click on feature visibility and go under advanced features i think okay and make sure sd1 interface is enabled here so enable sd1 here if you don't see it in your menu and click on apply okay so everything has been removed i can come here and disable the interface sd1 interface so if i go back here you can see that the sd1 interface is gone it's not there anymore so what i'm going to do now is add the interface or create the interface so it's here I will enable SD1 interface and then um, select members. Members are those one connections that we have. They're going to be bundled or they're going to be together under the SD1 interface. And the router or the, the firewall will only see that SD1 interface. But inside SD1, there is an algorithm that's going to balance the traffic and use those two connections depending on how you set it up. Okay, so I'm going to add the members here and I click on plus and select the different links or connections that I have. And this is something that I have to mention because I struggled with this for a moment. If you have your one connection somewhere in a certain policy or somewhere being used, you will not see it here. And you need to go and remove that IPv4 policy. Let's, for example, if we go back and look at this interface, the main interface, main port 2, untagged port 3, these are interfaces on this firewall. But if we go back under SD1 and we look at the members, we don't see them because we have policies that are using the, the main interface and the untagged interface. So here I select WAN for the primary. I also add the secondary, which is WAN2. So these are my two interfaces. You can see the traffic and everything will be split between those two interfaces. But right now they're all down and I click on apply and this should, 
yeah, bring them up here, but they're not being used. I still don't have access to the internet because I don't have any policy or any anything that is allowing me to go out to the internet. Second thing, I need to create a static route. So the static route will be created to instruct our firewall to use the SD1 as the default gateway. So here we are defining all the traffic and the interface or the outgoing interface will be the SD1 interface. The AD is 10, we don't have to change that and we just click on OK. We still don't have access to the internet because uh, we don't have a policy that is allowing us to go outside. So I can come here under IPv4 policy and create a new policy. The first one I'm going to call it man to network. This is for my main network uh, where this computer is connected. So the incoming interface will be the main interface. Outgoing interface will be SD1. So I go here and I select source, main address, destination, all address on the internet, service, everything on the internet. Uh, we need NATs and uh, yep, I just click on OK. And now I should be able to ping. Let's give it a moment. Yes, as you can see, now I'm able to ping the internet and it's all running just fine. And from what I can see here, the latency 8 and 9, I think I'm using the cable connection, but we're going to see later. If we go back under SD1, you can see that 20% is using the primary in terms of bandwidth. Okay, let's go on the sessions. Wow, okay. 3% of the sessions are using the secondary and 66% are using the primary. Oh, I also need to add a new policy for my untagged network. So I'm going to create a new policy here named untagged to internet and um, incoming interface will be the untagged interface. Outgoing will be the SD1 source temporary untagged network destination all um, services everything and yep that's it. So we should have um a lot more sessions here so under sessions you can see it's being balanced between the two um the two um interfaces that i have so i need to set up some few things first of all the performance sla these are the measures that you use to see if a network is good or not or, or if it qualifies or not or if it's down or up um the first one i'm going to create to measure my first or my primary connection, which is from Centralink. So I'm just going to name it Centralink. And what we're going to ping, just a Google, Google server. What are the participants in this? Uh, just the first interface. This is just according to my needs. What are the targets for this specific um, health check here? So let us see, I want it to be three millimeter uh, milliseconds so if it goes above three it's not good uh jitter threshold i can say 0 0.10 no 0 0.03 packet loss still zero percent link status check interval it's going to check the link every second and failures before inactive here three seconds so if we have no response for three seconds, this is inactive. Like this link should be considered inactive. Uh, restore link after. So after how many seconds we need to restore the link after five seconds. And then update static route. So this will have a power to go and remove this um, interface from the members if um, these SLA, uh, SLA targets are not met. And I click on okay. So this is for the first one. I'm going to create another one for the second one and the provider is Comcast. And under, I'm going to ping the 75 that, this is one of the Comcast DNS servers and participant will be one, two, target SLAs. Uh, trash, um, latency threshold, I'll say maybe 10 milliseconds. Jitter, 0. Mm, let's say 10 um, packet loss zero percent okay here I change it to three and click on save so I have my two um, performance SLA 
And what I'm going to do next is create a rule. So right now, if you look at the uh, interface, you can see that the sessions are pretty much all over the place. They use whatever they can. So you can see we have 44% on one. We have 57% um, on, on one, two. So what I'm going to do is create a rule to prefer one, one. So I'm going to say new, new rule. So the name of the rule is prefer central link. Oh, there is no space allowed, so I'm going to put an underscore. Um, source interface, all, address, all. Everything should use this rule here. So what are the members? I'm just going to say when one, I mean, when is the only member here, and we're going to use best quality. It doesn't matter anymore because we have just a single member and we're going to prefer that member and what is the measured sla we're going to consider is central link and i click on okay because this rule is up here it's going to be checked so so when is going to be preferred compared to when two and if you go back under sd1 you can see that the sessions are shifting we have 152 here 112 there 151 here 113 there so they're shifting one by one going to when connection so 143 um 103 over there so yeah all the sessions will shift over time i'm going to go ahead and disconnect my wan connection and you're going to see that we are not going to lose anything here in the traffic oh because right now i think i'm using one too i'm just going to connect uh, disconnect when one and we're going to see that uh no i'm going to disconnect when two and you're going to see that all the traffic all the pings will switch to when one and uh, we don't have any problem there so this is when one, this is when two. I'm going to disconnect when two. Okay, so you can see that after a few seconds, our connection is now using the when one connection. We can look at the latency, I mean the, the response time. Here we have eight milliseconds, there we have two milliseconds. So this is using the fastest connection, which is when one. And now if we go on the sessions, you can see that all the sessions are switching to when one and I am up. So I didn't have um, a long downtime and um yeah that's how it's set up so if i go back and plug in the when two you can see when uh, when two coming up here and it will be standing by waiting for for traffic or for uh or for when one to fail so it will uh, take over and take care of everything that's all i have for you today thank you for watching guys and uh if you like this don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take care bye